Hello Lemons! Kamusta kayo? Kay Lemon here. For this video, we are gonna be talking about trade and other receivables. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I kindly recommend that you do subscribe to this channel and also share this to your friends who need help in this topic. If you questions, kayo, feel free to comment below and I'll try to answer to the best of my abilities. The concept of receivable is actually simple. Lang yun, no? It all boils down to the concept of your right. No? Right to receive payment from another party. So, for example, uh, meron kang isang business transaction na mag-render ka ng service, tapos na-render mo na yung service na yun, syempre, you expect that you will be paid, no? So, kapag ikaw hindi ka pa binabayaran dahil na, kahit nag-render ka na ng service, um, dapat mag-recognize ka na ng receivable kasi may right ka na to receive payment. So, yun yung sa service aspect. Pag ano naman, nagbebenta ka ng goods, no? You are a merchandiser, let's say. Pag ikaw, nagbenta ka ng goods, hindi naman free. Siyempre, babayaran ka nila, no? Pag nabigay mo na yung goods, no? Narender mo na yung obligation mo mag-provide ng goods, siyempre, mag expect ka na na may matatanggap ka in return. Yan yung tinatawag mo na receivable. Yung binigay kong dalawang example na yun, these are related to trade receivables. So, kaya ko inuulit-ulit yung trade receivables, trade receivables. Kasi, sa receivables, dalawa yung component nyo, no? Yung trade receivables na yung sinishare ko earlier, na examples. Pero meron din isa pa, which is yung non-trade related receivables. Yung mga non-trade related receivables, ano lang to, no? Anything na hindi related sa trade receivables. So let me give you an example. Uh, for example, ako ay isang merchandising company. Ang uh, merchandising company nagbibenta ng goods, no? Nagbibenta ng goods ang merchandising company. So let's say, meron akong uh, time deposit, no? Time deposit. Ang time deposit, meron niyang interest, no? And syempre, kapag nagkakaroon ng interest, nag accrue ka ng interest, nag-recognize ka ng interest receivable. So, ang question, uh, no, no, ang interest receivable ba, part yan ng trade na, na receivable? The answer is no. Kasi ang interest, no, incidental lang siya to the business operations. Kaya ka nagkaroon ng interest receivable, hindi dahil yun yung ano, no, nature ng business mo, no, na primary operations mo. No. And it just so happens na nagkaroon ka ng extracurricular activities, Nag-invest ka sa time deposit, kaya ka nagkaroon ng interest receivable. So, hindi siya directly related dun sa trade, no? Again, hindi trade related. Ang tawag dito ay non-trade related receivable. So, mapapansin nyo, sa financial statements, ang presentation ng receivables is actually one line item, which is usually titled as trade and other receivables. So, this uh, is classified as a current asset in the financial statements. And, sinabi ko din na, Pinagkasama-sama siya under one line item. And you may ask me at this point, why go to the length no, that you did to explain the difference between a trade and a non-trade receivable if pagsasamahin mo din naman siya sa isang account in the FS, no, particularly in the balance sheet as a current asset. So let me tell you why no, kailangan i-distinguish. Kailangan mo siya i-distinguish kasi meron mga item na non-trade related receivable na hindi sinasama dun sa account na trade and other receivables. So, meron mga exceptions to the rule. So, ano yung mga examples na exceptions? Isa sa mga example dito ay yung advances, no? Advances to subsidiaries and uh, affiliates. Ang advances to subsidiaries, even though parang receivable siya kasi nag-advance ka ng, let's say, um, pera, for example, ng cash to your uh, subsidiary or affiliate, no? Even though may receivable ka on your end, kinaklassify ito, no? Uh, by exception, as a long-term investment. So, in my view, kaya siya kinaklassify as a long-term investment. Kasi, pag ikaw may subsidiary ka and affiliate, ang cash na binibigay mo, usually hindi mo naman din expect na babayaran nila kagad yan. Kasi ang cash na binibigay mo sa subsidiary and affiliate, ang intention mo dyan, para paluguin yung business. No? And pag tinigal mo, investment siya. Kasi you are placing your money in something with the hopes of returning, uh, uh, returning the cash to you with profit, no? So, investment talaga siya. Kaya, tricky ang receivables kasi ang mga exercises dyan, kailangan alam mo yung trade-related, non-trade-related na papasok sa trade and other receivables, tsaka yung mga exceptions to the rule. So, yun yung isang exception to the rule. So, within trade receivables, meron dyan isang particular na account which is yung tinatawag na accounts receivable. So, it's trade receivable pero mas ano siya, no, granular in a sense na it's within trade receivables. So, accounts receivable. Ang pagiging distinguish ng accounts receivable is that ito yung account na nag-represent ng receivable mo arising from credit sales. No? As opposed to a sale in cash, 
ang credit sale kasi ito yung mga transactions mo no, in a merchandising setting na hindi ka kailangan bayaran upfront. So let's say um, nagkaro- magkibenta ka ng isang goods no. Pwede i-deliver mo na yung goods pero tsaka ka nila babayaran let's say 30 days no after 30 days ka nila babayaran after 15 days hindi siya upfront na cash. Kaya tinatawag to na credit sale transaction. Ang credit sales uh, kapag ikaw nagkaroon ka ng sale na related diyan, papasok yung receivable under the account of accounts receivable. So, ano yung mga ano no, pumapasok diyan sa accounts receivable? So, pag gagawa ko ng T-account, ang mga debit niyan is actually yung credit sales no, obviously. Ang normal balance ng accounts receivable is debit ah. Kaya kapag ikaw nag-debit ka ng credit sales no, uh, nag increase yung accounts receivable mo. So, ang debit pa na isa dyan is yung recovery of accounts written off. So, explain ko later kung ano yung concept dyan, no? Pero gawan muna natin na T-account. Yung credit naman is actually yung mga sales discount. So, pag may sales discount, bumabawas yan, no? Sa credit sale mo. Kasi discount, eh, nagbawas ng price. Therefore, babawas yung receivable mo. Ganun din yung effect ng mga returns and allowances, no? Even yung write-off. Even yung collections including recovery. And factored accounts. So yung iba hindi ko muna explain for now, I'll explain it hopefully in the other videos. Pero ganyan yung T-account. Kaya ang isa sa mga questions dyan is, identify no, the amount of accounts receivable. Pero just remember, within the big picture, receivables is composed of trade and non-trade. And within the non-trade and trade classification, merong accounts receivable na under trade receivables. So dun sa T-account, meron akong sinabi na word which is yung write-off. Ang write-off kasi, pag tinignan mo yung konsepto niyan, is simply explained by this, no? You were supposed to have a certain amount of receivable, but due to certain circumstances, hindi mo na receive yung receivable na yun. Therefore, you have to write it off. Write-off basically means erasing your receivables or canceling, no? Your receivables. So, malungkod siya, no? Kasi pag in mo siya in business terms, ganito yung nangyayari dyan. Business ako, merchandising company, nagbenta ako ng goods and services na worth 500,000 to a customer. And yung customer na to, napakamahal ko, binigay ko yung best business term sa kanya. Sinabi ko sa kanya, uh, customer, uh, dahil mahal kita, bibigyan kita ng option to pay in 30 days. Kung hindi mo kailangan magbayad niyo yun, you can pay me within 30 days or on the 30th day. I don't mind kasi mahal kita. Mahal kita, customer. So, dahil mahal mo siya, syempre ikaw, uh, nag-record ka ng 500,000 na receivable kasi binento mo sa customer brain, di ba? Pero ito yung nangyari. Yung customer, piklang nawala, no? Sabi niya sa'yo, ayaw ko na makipag-deal sa'yo, no? Gusto ko na bumalik dun sa dati kong vendor. Ayaw ko na sa'yo. At yung binigay mo sa'kin sa na goods and services, or yung goods, so kasi merchandising company, yung binigay mo sa'kin sa na goods, hindi ko na babayaran yan. Magtatago na ako sa'yo. Ayaw ko na sa'yo. Bye-bye ka na. So, medyo masakit siya kung ikaw ay merchant sizing company tapos binigay mo yung lahat sa kanya. Masakit talaga yun. So, ikaw naman, mag-record ka ng write-off kasi hindi mo naman expect ng bayad yan. Eh. Yun yung nangyayari sa write-off basically. You're canceling your expected receivables. So, medyo mahaba na yung video. I'm gonna stop here. Pero this is just concept and part 1 pa lang siya. No? I hope that I'll see you in the other parts and if you have questions, feel free to comment below. May God bless you all. Bye everyone.